G'day, I'm Mitch. Welcome to Laundry Room Hobbies and uh, this time, because editing's taking me an awfully long time on some of the other things I've got going, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna attempt to paint a skull altar in one take. Okay, one take's probably a little bit of a lie. I, I'm restricted two factors. One, paint takes a long time to dry and two, the Nikon camera that I'm filming on lets me do a total of 29 minutes in one take. So, what are the rules? All live, I'm gonna try and avoid time lapse if I can, unless this drags out. And, uh, well, hopefully, I get it done in 29 minutes, otherwise I've gotta get up and press that record button one more time. So I'm gonna step outside, I'm gonna uh, undercoat and put a base coat spray over this skull altar, and then I'm gonna sit down, and you and I can paint a skull altar together. All right been undercoated and then I've hit this with uh, a Liquitex Burnt Umber Spray so the brown will be a really nice base for all the colours that I'm going to add in. Um, I've got this camera running, I've got a kind of close-up painting camera running here on the GoPro and there's a timer so that I know if I need to uh, get up and restart the uh, footage on the camera just up there. So, time to get started. My thinking to try and do this quickly because this is sort of what the challenge is, is it's going to be a lot of dry brushing. It's also going to be a lot of dry brushing with big brushes. So, first paint is going to be warp block bronze. A little bit of a pain with these brushes. Load up the brush. And start working out. I'm working the paint kind of up the bristles. And then just working some of it off. for here is more of a kind of heavy overbrush rather than a dry brush so a little bit more paint on the brush coats a little bit more heavily and I'm not trying to be too careful about it you can see it's quite wet I'm not working too much of the paint off but it's just leaving a nice kind of metallic tinge to start with now the reason for the brown paint as a base coat is that I'm not trying to worry about coverage get the kind of natural bronze or rust that I can layer on top of. trying to catch it with the tips of the brush rather than the uh, flat because the flat's still going to be carrying a bit of paint but it's rough it's not about making it pretty at the moment it's about starting to layer in some color
first layer on, I'm going to just switch paints. I'm not going to clean off the brush, I'm not going to worry about anything, I'm just going to jump straight up to the next colour. So, significantly brighter this time, hash nut copper. I might use a different, I'm not too worried. So, load up the brush again. What I'm going to end up with is some mixing on the brush and on the palette. So it means I can build up different color. This one I want to try and work off more paint if I can. And I'm going to focus on edges this time. So. more of a traditional dry brush this time, but I regret it. my brush is quite damp, there's quite a lot of paint on it still, so. I'm shaking it, not really to mix it, but just to drop some more into the cap. It makes it easier to pull out with this brush. Okay. Try and work it up the bristles. So I find with a lot of these, if you look at the way that the, the texture flows on these models or, or the, the way the edges fall. If you brush against them, you can pick up a lot more detail. It doesn't matter so much for these kind of spiked veins here, but on the edges here, because it's all upwards, you kind of can start building it up really quickly. good example here. Effectively I'd flip it this way and work in reverse and catch those edges. While I'm dry brushing, probably a good time to mention, uh, if you haven't already, please go and uh, subscribe to the channel. There's, you know, the Bloodthirster video, there's the unboxing of this army, which didn't include the uh, skull altar. This was more of a I knew I needed it for the army at some point, the corn, the corn army that I'm doing, and uh, I wanted to knock together a faster video. Felt like I wasn't sharing much with you. Um, so make sure you subscribe. There's also in the video description, there'll be links to uh, my Instagram page where I kind of post a little bit more work in progress stuff, some older models that I've painted that have been sitting on my display shelf. Uh, so please, I would love it if you go and join me there. You know, follow my Instagram account, send me a message, leave a comment on a post, like some posts. Let me know what you think of what I'm doing. Is there something you want to see? Am I not explaining things well enough? I'd be really interested to hear what you think of all the work. Because I'm really enjoying kind of sharing this at the moment. It means I don't go out and bug my girlfriend and say, look at the pretty model I painted. I've posted on Instagram instead and hopefully get to share it with some people that are slightly more interested. Not to say she's not interested, but she's, uh, you know, she likes that it's painted and, you know, I ask for color suggestions, but, it, you know, doesn't play, which is fair enough. It's my hobby. All right. So at this point, you can see this is starting to get a lot brighter than it was. Lots of metallic sheen, lots of sparkle. I also feel like I'm wearing half the paint at the moment. We'll move on to the next paint. 
This is Rune Lord Brass, which I've used as a fairly consistent highlight across the models I'm doing for this army, kind of most prominently on the Bloodthirster. And I discovered in that that it was very silver. Um, so the trick here, number one, it'll get a bit of a mix with everything I've used so far, but I'll be very sparing with this and really try and just catch those top edges. So, start up here with the corn symbol and just very lightly start layering it in. I can't even tell if this is working a good thing. And just catch those leading edges. Just grab a little bit more. I think that's mixed in a little bit too thoroughly. So bonus with kind of a big dry brush like this you cover a lot of space but you also because the bristles are quite thick it's a pretty cheap brush you actually get some streaking out of them which is not great for some things as you can imagine but for metals what you actually start doing is adding texture scratchiness beat up texture which I think is really cool. So, a bit of stabbing and jabbing. Try to just pick out some more details and I'll go quite heavy on the symbol on the top. Here we go, so a bunch of different tones. I'll show it to this camera as well. It's quite sticky at the moment too from all the paint. And that's it for this big brush. So. Fine, I have to wring this one out. So grabbing a slightly smaller brush and try and pick out some of these skulls. So I'm going to start with Zandri Dust. I have to be a little bit more careful here so I might switch brushes again. I'll start with the ones on the base. I'm going to go for a spot on the palette that's not used. And again, more of an overbrush than a dry brush to start. And we go knock out these. skulls around the base. I was tempted to there are skulls kind of in here and in the top and I think what I'll do is just switch to a small dry brush and hopefully I can get them so so the ones on the top
point with these, I think, is really just trying to pick out some extra detail out of a slightly different colour, but not a different tone. So, kind of red browns uh, in the golden hues on the bronze. I carry that kind of similar tone through here. And what I can do is where it kind of overlaps, I can come back through with another dry brush afterwards and just clean that up. And then there's the skulls hanging. Where is it going? So. But I won't kind of clean them up just yet. I've got 11 minutes left before I have to start the timer again. So, if you've hung around this long, thank you. Maybe some of that dry brushing might end up time lapse. We'll see. All right. Next color, again on the skulls, is Screaming Skull. Sorry, a sharp bone. Just a slightly lighter. Mine is very wet, which is problematic at times. Too wet for that brush. We'll swap dry brushes. That's the bone done. All right, next bit's a bit fun. So, contrast paint, flesh tear is red. And I'm not trying to do anything too fancy here. Damp brush is good. Gonna throw it there with a bit of water. And I'm just gonna start kind of layering it into these gaps. Like so. And then come through with a bit of water. Just try and get it to run. Not super worried about getting this beautiful. Just trying to add some red in. But more like it's been bathed in blood rather than painted in, so.
most I'm using quite a bit of water so contrast paint is by its nature quite thick and I want it to be relatively or more translucent than it comes across as so that's what I'm doing here. I reckon we're gonna have to take a break while this dries but that's fine. So, So, pile this up into the corners a little bit. And there we go. So, this is a perfect moment with four minutes to spare to uh, leave this to dry for a bit, and then we'll come back and finish it off. So I hope you're still there and I hope you'll hang around till the end. All right, we are back. This is dried. I had to put it outside for a little bit because the contrast paint was taking its time. Um, as you can see, it's picked up a very kind of red tinge which is great, I just wanted hints of it at this point. So I'm gonna pick back out the metal uh, and add some final details and it's gonna be done. So again, time is running. I don't think it'll take that long, but let's see how we go. And you know, I should say, thanks for sticking around this long. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Let's see where we get to with this. So back to this brush again, going back to the uh, hash nut copper, just for some of the parts. And well, yes, I've already done this and then gone lighter again. I just feel that this is my starting point that'll help me bring some of the detail back. So this needs to be a little bit more controlled. I'm just trying to pick back some of the detail. So <coughs> where the red's particularly strong, I'm just gonna add some of this metallic back. So. This is also a good opportunity to pick out some of the edges that ended up a little bit bone colored on that dry brush as well. So. Uh, 
as before, just trying to catch those edges. a little bit more. again and I'll just go back through and touch up some of the skulls. So a sharp deep bone again. What I end up with now some kind of different tones on the start on the skulls because they've got some red across them and then this just kind of drops them back from the really bright red that they had So, just the last step, blood for the blood god, the obvious kind of last step, I think, but some of you may not have thought of it or may not have seen it. So, Games Workshop make a technical paint that effectively it's somewhere between a, a contrast and a gloss medium. So, what I've found works really well. A little bit off. Sometimes you need to water it. This seems all right. And I'm just going to building it up on the steps in a kind of offset pattern, as if it was bloody footprints.
kind of use a dry brushing motion with this. I find that it actually splatters on really interestingly. Rather than just a straight painting motion as well. So come back through. you've got a brush for this the better because you actually get that streaking out of it like I was talking about with the metal dry brushing as well and this folks that's it what do you think about now I will cut away to some glamour shots wrap up the video but look, I just want to say thank you for sticking around and watching this whole thing obviously it's a longer video than I've done previously uh, if you enjoyed this please let me know in the comments look if you think that it, it needs some work you know th this style of format or whether you think that there's more or less I could have done on the on the, the skull altar let me know in the comments um, I'm really happy with this I think it's really cool and a really fast quick way of getting something effective done so thank you for watching I hope you'll, leave, you'll like the video, I hope you'll subscribe, and I will see you guys next time on Landroom Hobbies.